lucky us, man, here at Invictus Mixed Martial Arts, joined by GOAT Light Heavyweight, without a doubt, mm. arguably the GOAT MMA in general. And then also, it doesn't hurt the UFC Light heavy. sorry, UFC Heavyweight Champion. I'm living in the past, man. No, it's not really. You're joining us here in Australia. You've got like a million tour dates. You're doing a million things. You've got like, you're open to work, okay? you've got meat, you're eating, you open up a children's hospital there. <laughs> parliament. What made you want to come down and do all this stuff, man? Um, you know, um, I'm not here very often and martial arts is loved around the world. And I know there's a huge fan base out here and I just wanted to come shake some hands, spread the love of martial arts, kiss some babies, and just, just make people happy from around the world. And, and that's what we're doing. We've got a, quite a big tour this time and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Tackle some Canterbury Bulldogs yesterday. You were out there, you showed them how it was done. Also noticed you spoke to the boys a little bit about the mental game. Yeah, absolutely. Take us into that just real quick. What did you say to them? What, was, what kind of advice did you Well, we were just talking about sustainability and longevity in sports. And they were asking, you know, what were some of my, what, what were some of my secrets of success? And uh, I was just talking to them about the importance of community and a strong team, and family, and you know, between your friends, your love, um, your business partners, they really are what determines how far you're gonna be going. That's what I've learned personally. So I was just trying to encourage the guys to build up the teams around themselves individually to be the best teammate and man they can be in life. 100% man, and then you mentioned sustainability. How's the pick? We saw the tackles, tackling yeah. everybody. Yeah, Oprah, everybody gets a tackle, right? So How's the pick, man? The peg is good. I probably shouldn't have been tackling anyone yesterday, but the guys had my adrenaline so high, I felt no pain. Um, everything's healing up really, really fine. And uh, back at home, you know, all my physical therapists are encouraging me uh, to do nothing and just let my body heal. But since I've Which been you're out, doing great. Yeah, they're right at home right now. I'm being like, what is he doing? <laughs> being, out, being out here, you know, it's just the energy so high. I can't help but to join in the fun and, and, and have a good time. So. I'm waiting for that phone call from Dana White asking me what the hell. You got a phone call, right? A couple of days ago to be headline UFC 300. I did. I got a call from Hunter Campbell, one of the head lawyers of the UFC, asking yeah. me, said, John, I know it's only nine weeks away, but if there's any chance you're filling up to it, man, it'd be awesome news for the community that you're coming back and headlining one of the biggest events ever. And uh, as honored as I am for the opportunity, I just don't think I'll be ready. I just don't. And so... Um, I'm, I'm getting up there in age. I only have a few more events left, and I want to give those events my all and make sure that I come back 100%. I know that you weren't able to do 300, which would have been sick, but like realistically, what's the timeline, the realistic timeline? Yeah. And is it definitely Stipe when you come back? Uh, as of right now, I, I think it's definitely going to be Stipe. Stipe and I have both been in the sport for a long time. I don't think Stipe is getting the respect that he deserves. Um, um, I, me and Stipe have unfinished business, and I think that's the only fair thing to do. I'm excited for Tom in his future. But you never see that happening. You know, I, I can't say that. I'm really going to base whether I continue to fight on how I compete against Stipe, how I heal up from this injury. You know, I could blow Stipe out of the water, or it could be an absolute war. And I feel like I need to take one step at a time before uh, seeing what I do next. But. The Tom fight is definitely not off the table, especially with how I've been feeling being out here. Like, I've, I feel just totally like reinvigorated and just re-energized, uh, just being around all these fans. And so I'm like, I can't just walk away. So the ball is rolling in a very positive direction for uh, the, conti the career to right. continue. You, you, should, you, should meet, you should meet with the NRL every week and that way we're getting like- Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get you tackling people you, down here all the time. I was gonna ask you though, like, cause people look at it and it's like, all right, you won the big one, right? Light heavyweight goat, now you're the heavyweight champion. If you beat Stipe, you beat, you know, arguably the greatest UFC heavyweight of all time. What's what's left for you to do? Like, are you really just gonna sit here and just keep, you know, the pause? There's always gonna be a new guy. So what would, what would be, you know, what's the motivation? What would be the point? A lot of people don't really, Acknowledge that there, there always will be a, another awesome contender. It's the UFC job. It's to build the next big thing, um, and it's it's my job to realize when when you are enough and you have done enough, and you've provided for your family, you you know you've created the life for your for your people, and so um, I don't know. I really don't know what's going to be next. Um, I'm just taking it one thing at a time. And that's that's my respect to Stipe. It's just to take it one thing at a time and, and to respect him as the challenge that he will be. Do you guys speak on DMs at all? Like, are you no, guys never. in contact? No. no. He's a man of few words, but he likes to have a good time. So, yeah, I, I hear that he's just awesome to be around. I, I don't know him personally, but... 
I've had a few opponents. John Jones, Steve Pay, after party, sounds like a good time. Rampage Jackson has been trying to get me to be on his podcast recently. I think that, a, yeah, yeah, he yeah, has yeah. a new podcast, yeah. So yeah. I think that could be an uh, interesting watch for sure. I'm still really? goofing off. You'd be open to it? I would be, absolutely. Who knows what the future holds? Dude, I, lo I love stuff like that when you have like, not that you guys have crazy intense rivals, but it was like, it was a huge fight of a time. Yeah. And years later to sit down and just kind of like shoot the shit. I would love that. There's, there's, there's an uh, inevitable connection when you prepare for one person for months and you study this person and you learn what his kids' names are and what motivates him, what drives him. Eventually, whether you win or lose, you, you find a, a common ground, a huge respect. And um, that's what I've had for almost all my opponents, yeah. We'll let you go in a second, because I know there's a million people that want to meet you. But obviously, like, you and Tom, you had that entertaining, like, back and forth over Twitter. You was kind of like, dude, I want to unify my belt. You were like, look, here's my body of work. This is what I've done. And he's like, if I can't fight the next guy, then how am I going to get that body of work? What was the overarching message that you wanted to get across, you know, from, from that whole exchange? As impressive as Tom is, he's not important enough yet to determine my schedule and my decisions. What? I was gonna say, fair enough, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you were in his shoes, what would you do, right? He can't fight you, he can't fight Steve. Yeah, Bay. and I know there's this Alex Pereira thing floating around, Alex moving up to heavyweight, potentially, you know, as a fill-in. I don't know what's gonna happen. We've got the rumors about wow. UFC 300. They need something, John. If I were him, I would get after it. I would get after it. If you truly believe you're one of the best in the world, then get after it. Go out there and compete, you know? And the real fans will count, count your victories as championships or whatnot, but don't let me slow you down. Go out there, kick butt, make money. I gotta quickly ask you before we wrap, we know France Nagano went into boxing. A lot of people are wondering, what does John Jones look like? When in the, in, in the, the, the last question, would you ever entertain that once you're done with MMA? Because I have a feeling from you, you're not done done. You mean you're done in MMA, but that, you love to prove that you're the best in other people's areas. I've never been much of a boxer, so, um... If I were to fight Francis, I would love for it so you can MMA bets. Um, if the money was right and we would work it out between promotions, then a boxing match would be uh, what it was. But MMA is, is my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. That's what I've made my name know for. Stick to what backs to the race. Awesome, man. What's, what can everyone want to look forward to? Because you've got Perth and Brisbane as well, man. You've got yeah. two more dates. You're doing some clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. What can everybody expect if they haven't already bought tickets? So I'm not even sure where I'm going. Okay. It's, good, it's, good. it's been like a bit after. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just stay tuned to my Instagram. I'm, I'm trying to do a really good job of letting everybody know what the next event is. Link in the description for all the events coming yeah, up. Perfect. Make sure to go out and see John Jones. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Welcome to Australia. And we can't wait to watch the training session. Man. <laughs> John Jones, everybody.